Good morning, Civil Engineering and Architecture. Welcome to the Design a Shed project. In this project, we are not only going to design a shed, but we're also going to learn some of the basic tools with Autodesk Revit 2015. We have jumped up two versions since last year, and a few things have changed. For those of you who are familiar with Autodesk Inventor, because you had me last year, or you have just learned it from a different class, this is going to look very familiar, but at the same time it's very different and this class is going to be structured differently because of that. Unlike, unlike IED where we had many projects, three or four throughout each quarter, for civil engineering and architecture we mainly focus on one each quarter and projects will carry beyond quarters. So first thing first, it's always important to know what exactly we have to do. And if I take a look at the requirements of the project, we need to design a shed that is 12 by 16 with 8 foot high, high walls, has to be made of wood. The exterior walls have to have clapboard, wall sheathing, studs, and interior gypsum. The roof has to be a gable roof, needs one exterior door, an interior partition, walls creating two separate rooms, interior doors between rooms, and at least two windows, one in each room. So you can go beyond this, but for this presentation I'm just going to design a, a traditional shed using the tools of Autodesk Revit 2015. So first of all go to your desktop, find Autodesk Revit, and double click on it. And when you do so you should get a, an interface similar to mine. And if not, that's fine. Just head over to the R over here, and everyone do this. Click on R, go to New, and for this project, you have four different potential templates. The one we're going to start out with is an architectural template, meaning we are just going to design the building. We're not going to put anything electrical in it. We're not going to put anything mechanical in it. We're not going to put pipes in it. It's just a standard architectural template. Once you've done that, click OK. And Revit takes a little bit of resources, so it might take a second. OK, boom. And it's open. This area here is our workspace, very similar to Inventor. This area over here is our properties. Everything we do in Revit has properties and we're able to modify them to create the houses we'd like. And over here this is our project browser. The place where we can go uh, through our floors, through our levels, and also check out our different views of our project. Unlike Inventor where we only have maybe one or two different views of an object, when building a multi-layered house or building we have to be able to keep everything organized. In the workspace area we have these little boxes over here. These are our cameras. Whatever you design in Autodesk Revit has to always be in the range of these cameras. If you build it outside the cameras then your building might not show up proper properly when we look at it in 3D. So. If you need to move a camera, you can totally move the cameras. However, don't build over here because then you'll raise up your hand and you'll be like, Mr. Z, my shed's not showing up. And that's always kind of a pain. It's also important to name things early on because level one and level two can mean a lot of things in civil engineering. I have been in buildings where level one was actually level three and then you have two basement levels so it's good to clarify early on. So I'm going to right click on level one and I'm going to rename that to floor. It's going to represent my floor level and when you click OK it's going to ask you if you want to rename everything else that was called level one before. Go ahead and click yes and it'll change it as well and anything else that is listed level one. And let's rename level two right now to roof because it's just going to have a floor and a roof. Later on we're going to add multiple levels, three maybe four, 
and things just get more extravagant. Uh, yes, you also want to rename that. Now let's go ahead and start adding walls to our building. It's very important that you always know which floor you're building on. So right now I have the roof selected, and if I put walls up here, I'd be putting walls on the roof, which would not be correct. So I'm going to double click on floor, and now I'm back to floor, and now I'm going to click on the walls option over here, and I'm going to draw out a couple walls. So I believe I said 18 by 16. I'm going to go, and you can notice it says 18 feet, and I'm going to adjust this to 16 feet, and put together my shed. So I just clicked, 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 and Revit is smart enough to understand what you want to do. Now right away I realized that it was actually 12 by 16 feet so if I want to adjust the dimensions very quickly a great way of doing that is selecting one of the walls by just clicking on it and usually the perpendicular dimension will pop up when you select a wall. So if you select this wall this dimension will show up. And This is the 18 but I wanted it to be 12 so I click on the 18 I'm going to change it to 12 when I click away it's automatically going to correct it for me. I kind of like that dimension over there so I'm going to get it to stay by clicking on that little double dash over there and now it becomes more permanent. If I want to lock it in place I can do just that and that will lock it down. So I'll show you again what I did. First select the wall. When you do that it will show the dimension on this side. If you need to adjust it now is a good time to adjust it by clicking on it and adjusting that dimension. If the dimension is fine, click on this option over here. It's going to lock it into place, and when you click away, it's going to make it semi-permanent. If you want it to be a permanent dimension, meaning a dimension that cannot change, you can just click on it again and lock it. Dimensions that are locked will not change and if you try to change them they might generate errors so be careful with that. Now that we have our walls in place we need to make sure they're the right height. Now Autodesk Revit defaults walls to 20 feet but if you think about it no building typically has walls that rise up 20 feet per floor so we're going to have to adjust that and a great way of adjusting that is to head over to our elevations. Our elevations are going to show us what a side view of our building looks like. So if I click on east, this is the side view of my building. Here's my roof, and it's defaulted to 10 feet. However, if as you can see, the wall has exceeded twice that, so the wall is actually 20 feet. And I would like it to be the elevation of the roof, which actually 10 feet is a little too much, so I'm going to adjust it to 8 feet, which is typical for a shed. And now that that's set at 8 feet, I'm going to select the wall. So let's say I select this wall. And you have two ways of doing this. One, you can grab the arrow and drag it down to the 8 feet. And it should show it to the side over there, 8 feet. So I dragged it down. Or two, you could click on a wall. And where it shows the properties of that wall after it's been selected, you can adjust it over here to 8 feet and click away. Now after I did those two walls I'm going to show you something neat. Head over to this button over here on the top. This is your 3D view of the building. Click on that and you're going to see a 3D view of your building. Now I'm rotating this just like I would rotate a shape in Autodesk Inventor which means I'm holding down the shift key and I'm pressing down the middle scroll wheel and I'm rotating the part. To zoom in and zoom out, you just zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel on a mouse. And to move left and right, you press in the scroll wheel of a mouse. And while holding it in, you move left to right. Never use this cube until you become proficient moving without using the cube. This thing will just handicap you if you use it too much. So be careful. So these were the two walls we set to 8 feet. Alternatively, in this 3D view, I could select the wall and I could drag it down to 8 feet. But it's a little more tricky, so I'm actually not going to. Or you could use these options with the wall selected 
and you could change the height offset to 8 feet. And that's another way you can do it. So there, now we have an 8 foot wall structure. And if I look in my east elevation, it's correct. And if I look in any of my elevations, it's actually correct. And this is why we have to make sure we always build within the cameras. If you don't build within the cameras, it will show nothing over here. And then you'll have to try to figure out why exactly it's not working. So that's going to be part one of this tutorial.